really beautiful. So that was a solid night's sleep after a long day on the bike yesterday, uh, finishing with a awesome swim in the reservoir and unfortunately cutting my foot, which I have dressed and should be okay. I've got Lindsay's already up and about. What's for breakfast? We have slap and porridge and some pills of coffee. Excellent. Needed for the day ahead. It's about 50, 55, maybe 60k today, uh, which will take us down to Port uh, a ferry which will take us across oh, to Gia. Are to be any hills? There, there will be hills. Uh, yesterday, we, we don't know, yesterday felt like a 3,000 footer day and when I looked at View Ranger on the map <laughs> last night it was saying 3,300 feet worth of hills between here and uh, the port to get us across to Isle Gia. That was just that last hill. Yeah, the last hill. The last on hill which, own. which had uh, numerous tops it liked to deceive us that, that we were at the top and then suddenly it would let us down a little bit and then make us have to climb up to the top again. So, anyway, breakfast time. Right, let's go. We were on a hard standing last night uh, by this reservoir and so we had to be a bit more innovative with our temp pegs. Uh, with our bicycles, at least we knew if they were going to get stolen in the night because our tent would fall down. Yeah. Scotch porridge oats with linseed, chia seed, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, almonds, and dark. Oh, thank you very 70 much. 70% chocolate. Quite a nice spot to start the day. A wee tip for when bikepacking, and even though it didn't rain at all last night. You can see the dew condensation on the kit and you need to make sure that you do up your the ends of any bar rolls or any uh, kit bag openings um, so that because when that dew collects it starts to run and then ends up getting inside kit. Lindsay is catching up with our water filtering supplies. So I've filled that direct from the reservoir and we've got our first bottle so we can close that off. This one's full. So there's no pumping involved? Nope, no pumping involved. I've been there. much prefer just to let it do its thing. So it's a gravity filter from Platypus that we've got. Uh, it takes a couple of litres in the top bag and then it just Close down. You might be able to hear it. Blowing in. We hope to hit a shop in Tarbet this morning. We'll pick up some more supplies for our tea. But by every time you stop at a shop and you pick up a bottle, you're using another plastic bottle. And one of the things we try and reduce, if possible, on trips is the amount of single use plastic waste we can do. So if we can filter our own water and carry it, it saves us buying bottled water all the time. And you have to buy quite a lot of bottled water if you're going to carry the amount of water that we do because under each bike we have a one and a half litre tank under the frame bag we'll have a 500 mil and up on the bars we'll have either a 750 or with a larger fat bottle bag it's easier to slot in another litre so We're all packed up, uh, we're just about to head off. Uh, we are heading down to Port of Addy, uh, just down, it's about all downhill from campsite, which is a great start to the day. And we'll get the ferry across to Tarbert. Uh, these are all uh, long peninsulas of land that are heading uh, south, a bit like the Mull of Kintyre. And they're in rows, so we seem to be crossing little ferries from mainland to mainland. 
Uh, but later on, we're going to get a ferry out to the island, hopefully, fingers crossed, Island of Gia, where we're going to stay the night and have a day off tomorrow. the ferry from shortly from Portavadi and we can see another ferry in the distance making its way out and across to Tarbet where we'll start the Kintyre Way. So our next sailing is 11.30, which is in 35 minutes. It's fine. Nice building. Got to lose. Go see if we've got some electric. So this is the royal castle of Tarbert. We came in on the ferry just down below, had our lunch and uh, headed up to see the castle and we're headed out on the Kintar Way now over those hills, hardest hill of the day is the first one on this route and then uh, we're into the wilds again. Up we go! Good effort. That view is starting to open up. 
when we said it was straight up from Tarbet. Really did feel like it was straight up at times. The ferry's heading off back to Portavadi. A stunning coastline. How's the hike bike going? Maybe a little better for doing some extra press ups and uh, building the old upper body strength a wee bit because I think with um, cycling being your main thing you get strong legs but I certainly didn't have strong arms so getting a few press ups into the routine <laughs> and you've been doing that well I've been doing that since I broke my elbow and um, had it pinned together with uh, metal again but uh, yeah it does help and I think I'm actually stronger now than I was before I broke it. <laughs> comfort break wasn't letting them film that but for lady bike packers these are genius um it's a quick release emergency exit that undoes all the way across the rear and allows <laughs> for privacy on your comfort breaks their endura certainly make those i don't know whether others with the same <laughs> with the same design but that feature definitely worth having ladies <laughs> excited when you're riding up to a horizon you can't see over and you think it's going to be a outstanding view just like that one no log back mm -hmm. and to skipness forest so this is probably one of the highest points on the northern end of the Kintar Way. So we've done most of our climbing for this bit and we're going to have a bit of a descent and we're descending still down to the east coast side of the peninsula uh, where you can get a ferry across to Arran. And we know this because the last time we came on this ride we had to abort on day three and uh, take the ferry back to Arran to get back across to Ardrossan because it had rained solidly for three days and we were totally washed out uh, but we're hoping to pass that port this time and get across to the west coast and find gear So the Kintar Way, oh, a bit rough. So the Kintar Way isn't all fire roads. There's a nice bit of single track here. And uh, the whole way we've been, we've been mixing it up with single track, a little bit of pushing for mountain bike bike packers. And uh, whilst we do some sections of road, it's really just to help us get out to the places we need to be. Um, much prefer to be out here in the wilds. And uh, we're quite grateful at all these bogey patches. That are not actually bogey patches. <laughs> They're not actually bogey patches. They're quite dry because we haven't had very much rain here. Um, but it's getting a bit technical for 100 riding, so here we go. I'm
<laughs> it's about 150 mil travel on the front of these bikes and you can just enjoy it and not worry about hitting a big divot yeah yeah oh, fantastic <laughs> there's still loads to go there's 4k of descent here we've only done about a thousand meters in fantastic yeah. condition as well yeah. those trails just amazing so dry hey it's nice to meet you Afternoon tea. Doesn't look like a very open <laughs> no, it doesn't. Smallest post office. All you see marked up on maps around here is post offices. Because really there isn't very much else. My fuel bag's just filled with gadgets, electronics, and cameras. And I've just discovered <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay has topped up hers in the co op oh, and is filled with nuts, figs, um, cheese, olives. grapes, olives, <laughs> <laughs> garlic. <laughs> So this is a place, I think it's called Clanig, and it's where we got the ferry, and that's Loch Ranza over there, and we had to abandon our trip the last time. Oh, that's not interesting. It is, because everything from here is new on, and we've realised we don't know what time the last ferry is. Yes, so let's get our skates on then. <laughs> so I'm getting told to put the camera away, <laughs> and we've got to get a pedal on to get across so as we don't miss our ferry to gear. So we just sussed out. We've got 60 minutes to get 18k over the top of these hills to the ferry. They'll catch the last one because we didn't spot on the timetable that the last ferry, the 7pm one, is only available on Fridays. And today isn't a Friday. So, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but over that hill, that's where the ferry is. Let's see if we get there. We got up the climb, and we need to be greeted when we got over the top. And there was this gorge, which we had to go right down into and then haul the bikes back out. So, it's looking pretty unlikely. We've got about 45 minutes to get off this moor. And the track's pretty rough. Yeah. It's not the fastest going in the world. We've got 6k we can divert onto the road and team time trial it, see if we can get to the port. Fingers crossed. Where are we going? It's just grass. Toss the key. Thick grass. <laughs> A wee ferry update. 
that last ferry that we stopped to film that we weren't actually getting on. Um, <laughs> that wasn't very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> a bit less interesting than the next ferry that we're actually we're going to try and catch well we're not going to try and catch that ferry now because we've run out of time <laughs> um and i think we are pure puggled <laughs> because we've been sprinting trying to do 18 kilometers in an hour over these tussocks and it's not happening no <laughs> If this had been fire track, we might have stood a chance. <laughs> Ever the optimist. <laughs> but we've been redlining it for the last half hour. Oh. And basically, I don't know if you can see, but it just looks like it goes on and on and on. And we're just riding on. Look at this. Hold the bike there. We're just riding on folded grass and reeds. And it's just so slow. I think you owe me at least an ice cream with a flake. An ice cream with a flake? <laughs> yes. I'm sure we can manage that. A wee 99. <laughs> so, sure. we're almost out of this no man land and we're heading for this little lochen. Lochen Freoch. Freoch? That better be like an oasis. I think we've deserved it. I don't think we would have caught the seven o'clock ferry. Never mind the six o'clock one. This track's a wee bit harder than we anticipated, but we're doing it for the first time. It's all about getting out there and finding these things out. The last time we did this, uh, we made a little coastal track and it was so hard. That when I say it was so hard, I know everybody says these things are so hard, but literally this was so hard. There was boulders and tiny gaps to fit bikes through. So we found a new track this time, which was amazing. You need some food? Tactical flapjack. Tactical flapjack. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. The oasis. You just make it out in the distance. That is our home for the night. As long as we can find a flat spot. Look as you can see. Oh yeah. Ah, it's looking good over there. I mean, this is just outstandingly beautiful. But, there's nowhere to pitch a tent at the minute. Gorgeous purple heatheriness. <laughs> Now, this is golden single track. If this leads us to a nice spot to camp tonight, what a way to finish. I mean, that was a hard push, but this is nice single track. Just hope we can find a flat spot. The last lock, there is nothing. But look at this. We're back on the fire road and hopefully going to find a pitch somewhere near here and somewhere near this pond. No rocks to get in. It's going to be a bit swampy. Yeah. We just had a great swim in the loch, but absolute midge fest, eating alive, trying to get our clothes back on. So we've done a mad run up to here because there was a wee bit of direct sunlight up here and this is the midges when they're not so bad. I couldn't actually breathe down there. 
is uh, incredible. The worst midges I've ever been in in my life. Uh, we're not where we thought we would be tonight, but turns out it might have a few advantages. We had a nice freshwater swim instead of swimming in the salt water in the sea. And also there is two possible routes down to the ferry uh, to get across to Gia, and we can now pick the more off-road one rather than doing six or seven K on tarmac, which we would have had to do in the rush to uh, try and get there. So, ginger tea on the way. People often ask with camping in Scotland as to what do you do about the midges in your tent? There only is one solution and that is death by to midge one at a time. Kill the blinkers. Thank you. 